So we're out for a stroll in the new forest. It's a misty spring morning and it's cool, but the sky is quite bright. So I have a feeling that above this mist, there is a blue sky. As you can see, there's an awful lot of standing water around. It's been quite wet the last few days, but we're taking advantage of this dry weather or this cessation in the rain to get out and explore a little bit. So we'll just have a look and see what we can find today. So we're walking through the middle of a stand of the tallest gorse bushes I think I've ever seen. It's very unusual for gorse to get this tall and in fact probably what will happen now you can see all of the dry material underneath there, all of the dead wood and dead growth at the bottom of these gorse bushes and it's quite likely that this stand of gorse bushes will burn to the ground this summer. It'll dry out, some little spark will ignite it and it will burn down to the ground and then it will regrow. That's what gorse does. So there is a term for this kind of plant and it's on the tip of my tongue at the moment so I will put it on the screen now and it's a type of plant that actually thrives an environment where it burns down to the ground every few years and regrows. Quite beautiful gorse flowers and I don't know that we're going to smell anything today. No, it needs to be a little bit warmer before we can smell the scent of the gorse blossoms which to me they smell like coconut. So what a beautiful, calm, quiet morning it is in the woods. just going to have a wander through. I'm probably not going to go far off the path, I think, just because everything is so wet underfoot. I think we'll just stick to the made-up paths and go for a nice long wander and see if we can find a log to sit on. I bought a little bit of lunch with me, so we'll just sit and enjoy the tranquility of the outdoors. It really is a beautifully cool, fresh morning. Now there's the remains of forestry work here. Lots of bits and pieces of cut down trees and stripped bark and so on. And it looks on the face of it a bit of a mess. But all of these decaying bits of timber and bark are habitats for insect life, especially beetle larvae and things like that, which in turn provide food for woodpeckers and other animals. And so what looks like a bit of a mess, this decaying timber and everything else is actually not a bad thing as far as nature is concerned. Nature will make use of this and exploit this to its fullest potential. Eva, you're not eating rabbit poo are you? It's quite nice just to stand and listen to the noises of the forest. I can't recognise all of these bird calls but I did hear one a minute ago which I do recognise as a green woodpecker. Let's see if we can hear it again. That's not it, that's a plane. No, it doesn't sound like we're going to hear that woodpecker again. Come on then. Don't you jump up at me, you've got muddy paws. We're just going to divert a tiny bit off the track here because I've seen what I think is a wood ant nest but it's one of the biggest I've ever seen. If indeed that's what it is. Yeah, here we go. So just behind this tree here, don't go across the river either. That's a wood ant nest. Let's see if we can see any actual ants moving around. Yeah, there's a little bit of activity down there.
but that's got to be one of the biggest wood ant nests I've seen. It must be five foot across and probably two, two and a half foot deep. I am noticing down here, this is bilberry foliage here, and I can see bilberry bushes, slightly larger ones, throughout the woods there. You can see just a patch of green twiggy stuff right there. That's bilberry foliage. Now, I have yet to find a productive bilberry patch here in the new forest because it seems that the animals graze the bilberry foliage down and so you only ever find a few berries. So I have yet to find anywhere actually worth travelling to to pick bilberries in the new forest. It's very nice here. Lovely little just woodland dell down there. So yes, evidence of the managed nature of this woodland right here. A stack of oak logs there. I can't help feeling a little bit sad that those aren't closer to my house. What I could actually do with a stack of oak like that. There's some pine logs over there and what looks like silver birch down here. Actually, one of the things that people have said to me quite consistently on my videos is, oh, I wish I could identify trees. So let's have a look at one or two trees today. So these are silver birch, one of the easiest trees to recognize, actually. And these are quite mature specimens, so the bark has cracked and fissured like this. But on a much younger specimen, the bark is nearly entirely white and papery and it peels away in strips. So we'll have a look at a younger silver birch in a minute. Eva, I don't think we're going to go down there, it's too boggy. That's a shame, I could do with a piece of birch timber for carving. If there's a small enough piece in one of those piles, I may well carry that back with me. So down there we've got a whole stand of silver birch trees and you can see the white trunks of the silver birch trees. We'll have a close look at a younger specimen when we find one. And one of the things I really like about silver birches is in the springtime, and you can't really see it today um, because you need the sunshine on them, but about this time in spring, just before the trees are coming into leaf, the small twigs of the silver birch trees turn from brown to a really dark and rich purple. And it's one of the signs of springtime that I really look forward to seeing because it means that things are just about to spring into life and all, all of the activity and growth that we see in spring is about to start. So I've just noticed here on the ground we've got lots of the remnants of sweet chestnuts. Now, there won't be anything worth having inside these shells now, although I imagine the squirrels are probably still prizing these open and possibly feeding on some chestnuts that have self-stored through the winter. But it's worth noting things like this when you see them. So this spot here is obviously going to be quite a productive spot for sweet chestnuts in the autumn. So I'll make a mental note of that and when we get to the autumn, the right season for sweet chestnuts, we'll come back out here and see if we can find ourselves some chestnuts to roast. So I was saying earlier I wish I could take some of these oak logs home with me to work on. There is a small pile here of interesting little offcuts, and I don't have an awful lot of carrying capacity. It's a real shame because look, there's a there's a slice of the whole tree right there. I thought that was actually growing out the ground, but it's not. That's a slice of the actual tree. However, I do have space in my bag for this little slice here. Nice thin slice of oak, end grain. We can see the ring pattern on there. I think we'll take that home let it dry out and then we'll see if we can make something interesting out of that. So, some slightly younger specimens of silver birch in amongst this little stand here. Let's go and have a look at this one over here. So this is more typical of a young silver birch tree and we get this white 
bark that's almost like paper wrapped around the tree and it has this tendency to peel away into little threads like that which I believe people have used as tinder. So that's the silver birch, one of the easiest trees to recognise I would say in a deciduous wood just because there aren't very many other trees which have this white papery bark like that. So there we go, silver birch. So for lunch today we've just got some nice rye bread and some panda iho. And we've got a bit of cheese, we've got some cheddar and some manchego. The sky has brightened a little bit here. If you can hear noise in the background, it's this electricity pile on here. The sky has brightened just enough for us to see that purplish effect on the branches of the silver birch trees. I don't know how well that's going to come across on camera, but we've got there. Actually, let's have a look at that one right there. So that silver birch tree there. To my eye, in the natural light, that's got a purplish hue to it. And that for me is a clear indicator that spring is happening. So, same location, different day, and if you can't take the wood to the workshop, perhaps instead we can bring the workshop to the wood. Eva, don't climb on timber stacks. Haven't you read the signs? Eva. Eva. You 
you're eating sticks, are you? Okay. So there we are. I make no claims that this is either pretty or particularly functional, but it'll do to eat my lunch out of. Okay, so this wooden bowl or trencher or whatever was only designed to be completely rough and ready while I was out there in the forest. And it served its purpose for me to eat my lunch out of, but I'd like to actually make it into something, I'm not gonna make it into something more regular or refined, but I'm just gonna make it into something a bit more usable. And for that, it's just gonna be a case of using these, these little carving gouges to tidy up all this rough timber at the ends where I've chipped it with the axe. Okay, so that's about as far as I'm going to take that today, but with sharp enough tools it's possible to actually get a surface finish which may not even require any sanding. It's just a case of taking very light cuts over the ridges formed by the previous tool marks. And so we could, with enough patience and with a sharp enough tool, get that to a final finish without any abrasives or anything like that at all. I don't know that that's what we will do actually. I think we may end up just sanding the inside of this so that I can get it nicely polished. And then it will take a finish, which will probably be coconut oil or something, or, or a food safe oil and wax finish. So that's as far as I think we'll take this today. But I'm quite pleased with how it's shaping up. Thanks for joining me on this trip in the forest to look at silver birch trees and to make something out of the silver birch timber. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.